In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make a beautiful mailbox for your house, and I'm nicknaming this project the Maker's Mailbox, and that's because you're gonna need some maker-related tools, things like a 3D printer, a small metal bending brake, and optionally, a laser engraver if you wanna laser engrave anything on the front of your mailbox. Now, if you don't have those tools and you've always wanted them, consider this an opportunity to convince your wife that you need some new tools. You can show her this video, obviously after this little conversation that we're having, and you can show her how great this mailbox looks and how passionate you are about mailboxes and how you really need that new 3D printer. I'll put links down in the video description below to the tools that I'm using, as well as anything else you'll need that you'll see in this video. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is commit to this project and rip that old mailbox off the wall. Now we can take a look at the 3D model of what we're after. And you can see that the mailbox itself consists of a few major parts. There is a wooden panel on the front, there's a stainless steel outer shell, there is a regular steel inner shell, there's some hardware, a handle, and some 3D printed parts at the back. I'll make the design files available for all of these parts, so be sure to check the video description down below. And the first thing we're going to look at here is this front wooden panel, and it's pretty much just a front wooden panel. Now you can choose any type of wood that you want to achieve the look that you're going for, perhaps something to match the outside of your home, and in my case I wanted something modern and very clean looking, something with some warm yellow and golden tones in it, and I thought bamboo would be a good match. My piece actually started off as a cutting board, which was great because it was sufficiently thick at about 16 millimeters, and I had to just trim it down to about 9 inches tall and 12 inches wide. Because it was previously a cutting board, it also ensured that it was very flat and I didn't have to plane the wood. I'm adding about three or four coats of wood stain here in hopes of making the wood a little more weather resistant. The stain I chose also has a bit of a tint to it, and I thought it made the yellow and gold tones of the wood even deeper and more rich looking. With the stain completely dry, I could now laser engrave the word post onto the front, and of course, if you wanted to make it even more custom, you could use your house number. For this engraving work, you really don't need a fancy machine, and in this case, I'm using the Two Trees TTS 55, which is an entry-level laser cutter and engraver. I'll put a link in the top right-hand corner of the screen to a previous video that I did about this machine specifically. As you can see, it does a very nice job of engraving, and the text is super sharp. Next on the to-do list, we have some sheet metal work to take care of, and we'll start off with this inner shell. It's made from 20 gauge mild steel sheet, and the flat pattern is going to be cut on a professional machine, not a piece of equipment that I own, so this is something that you would have to outsource. And then as you see, there are some flanges that need to be bent, and it has to be bent up in the general sort of shape of a box with two open faces. I've designed the patterns so that you can bend them on one of these very inexpensive 18 inch metal handbrakes. You don't need anything fancy or expensive like a box or pan brake. Because this inner shell is not visible on the outside of the mailbox, I've taken the bend lines on the flat pattern and I've aligned little cut notches with those bend lines. So it's really easy to identify and line up your bends on your small handbrake. Just as I'm doing here, you would start off by bending those small flanges first. And once you have all three of those small flanges bent up into the same direction, then you can move on to the sides of the box. The two sidewalls will get bent up first into the same direction. And then what you'll notice is that there is a cutout, which allows you to slide the metal bending bar in so that you can bend up the bottom of the box. If this cutout wasn't present, then you would need a box and pan break to do this work. But as you can see, it's completely doable on one of these very cheap hand breaks, and I'll put a link to one of these down in the video description below as well. While we're bending sheet metal, we might as well do the outer shell as well, and this is made from 20 gauge stainless sheet. And again, for this pattern, I had to get this professionally laser cut because my hobby grade machines will not cut through steel. When sourcing these parts, be sure to ask your supplier if they have stainless steel sheet with the protective peel ply on one side. This is going to ensure that the outside of your mailbox has that pristine looking stainless steel grain on it. This piece only has two simple folds to it and because it's visible on the outside of the mailbox, I did not put any cut notches in for the bend lines. Check the available drawings to see the measurements for where the bend lines are located. You can put a piece of paper between the metal bending brake and the stainless steel as an added extra layer of protection while you're bending 
even though that you've left the peel ply on. If your bends are sharp and accurate, the outer shell should fit over top of the inner shell with just a little bit of space in between so there's ample clearance between the two. Since the inner shell is just made of mild steel, if you do not do anything about that, over time it will oxidize and rust. Now I had to use mild steel and not stainless because some grades of stainless are non-magnetic. Later in the video, we're gonna be using magnetic latches to keep the mailbox closed, and so mild steel fit the bill. Right now, I'm using isopropyl alcohol to remove the oily residue on the sheet metal that comes from the factory in order to prevent it from oxidizing. And that's because I'm gonna be painting this thing gloss black, so I used some self-etching primer as well as some gloss black enamel spray paint in order to provide corrosion protection and clean up the look. Next, we're gonna bring back the front wood panel because we're gonna be pre-drilling some holes and two of those holes at the top will be for the handle, which is from Ikea. I'll put a link to this handle in the video description down below. Otherwise, I'm gonna line up that handle with the top of the wood panel, and I'm just gonna mark the center of these holes. Depending on the type of wood that you're using, you may want to pre-drill the holes before screwing anything in to prevent cracking or splitting. In my case, I'm using bamboo, and from my experience, it does have a tendency to split. I'm going to do the same thing for the nine holes on the flanges of the inner shell. And so I'm gonna line up that inner shell with the bottom and side edges of the wooden panel, mark those holes, and then pre-drill each one of them. Do not forget to properly set the depth of your drill bit so that you can't drill fully through your panel. Obviously, you don't wanna see holes on the front side. One other thing that I do here is I double check that the holes that I just marked are aligned properly with the wooden panel and I use a combination square to do that. If my pilot holes are properly aligned with the panel, then I know that when I go to drive the screws in at the end, the inner frame will not end up skewed with respect to the panel. Everything will be aligned perfectly. As I mentioned earlier, my panel is about 16 millimeters thick or just over 5 eighths of an inch. And so I'm gonna be using these number six by 3 eighths inch long pan head wood screws. The pan heads are appropriate for attaching the sheet metal to the wood and I've designed these little access windows in the back of the mailbox so you can get an extended bit in there and drive those screws in completely straight down. There are a total of nine screws required and when you're done it should look something like this on the inside and your mailbox is really starting to take shape. The IKEA handle is next and on the back of the handle there are countersunk screws and the handles come with hardware. So we're gonna be using the IKEA hardware to attach the handle to the back of the wooden panel. Just keep in mind that if you use a thinner wooden panel for your own project, you're going to have to source the appropriate hardware so your screws don't pierce through the front of your panel. With that done, we're one step closer and we're moving on to some 3D printed parts. The 3D printed parts go on the back of the mailbox and they're used for the magnetic latches as well as mounting the outer frame to the wall. When printing these, you are going to want to use some high quality plastic because they will be supporting the weight of your mailbox and you're going to want to use some heavier infill settings. I would suggest something along the lines of 25%. I have the left and right hand side printed here and on the left hand side, you can see that I've already installed all of the hardware. Down the side, there are two M4 nuts that just get dropped into these holes. And then there is a three quarter inch magnet with a countersunk hole in the middle. And that uses a number eight by 32 machine screw to hold it in place. And yes, I'm mixing metric and fractional hardware for this project. And that's because I'm from Canada. There's a very heavy influence from the United States. And so certain things like these magnets, the holes are appropriately sized for the fractional hardware. So those 832s, as well as any sort of construction materials like my wood screws. However, for most machine components, we do still use a lot of metric. And so you'll find that the other screws that I'm using are metric screws and nuts. All of that being said, I did try and use hardware that is interchangeable in the sense that the outer diameters are almost the same. So for example, number eight and M4 screws, they will fit through the same clearance holes. So for example, I'm attaching these brackets to the outer frame using some M4 by 12 socket head cap screws. But if you don't want to use metric, you probably could get away with using 832 by half inch 
and they would fit just fine. And so four of those socket head cap screws, two on each side, will attach those brackets to the outer frame. The screws thread into the nylon locking nuts that we inserted into those 3D printed parts, and with everything tightened down, it should be very secure. For this project, I've also supplied a drilling guide that you can print on a regular piece of 8.5 by 11 printer paper, and it should fit. Just make sure you print the pattern to 100% scale, and you may have to adjust some of your printing margins because those drill holes are getting pretty close to the outsides of that paper. The drill locations are clearly marked on the template, and I'm using a quarter inch masonry bit because I'm going to be installing my mailbox onto brick. And since this is a very light duty application, I'm just using some of these plastic wall anchors to hang the mailbox. These are quarter inch anchors intended for number eight screws, and I believe they're about one and a quarter inch long. Hang the outer frame on top of these screws, and I would recommend adding a washer underneath of the screw head. This is going to distribute the load over a larger area of the plastic bracket. The last thing we need to do is attach the rest of the mailbox to the outer frame, and the only thing holding those two things together are these shoulder screws. You could use regular nuts and bolts, but the important thing to note here is the location of these nylon washers, and I've colored them red and green so it's very clear and easy to see. And so there is a red one here that goes between the inner and outer frame, and the green one is the one that goes on the inside of this mailbox between the inner frame and the nylon locking nut. I'll admit that this part is a bit of a pain to do, but the cool thing here is that if you have magnets that are strong enough, it'll hold the inner part of the mailbox in place while you mess around with those washers. You may need to get a second set of hands to help you get that hardware in place, but once you do, you can pop the mailbox open and you can use a regular hex key on the outside with the socket head and just a wrench on the inside with the nylon locking nut to tighten the hardware down. If you use the shoulder screws that I recommend, you can tighten the hardware all of the way down and the mailbox won't bind. If you use regular cap screws, then you're gonna need to tighten them down to the point where you find the sweet spot where it's not loose and sloppy, but it's not tight that you're binding the mailbox closed. The final thing to do here is use some stainless steel cleaner to wipe off all of the fingerprints on the outer shell of your mailbox, and you can finally stand back and admire all of your hard work. And so that's it for the Maker's Mailbox project. I hope you guys found this video interesting, inspiring, and perhaps useful if you're looking to build your own. And if you are, everything you need is in the video description down below. Go check that out, check out all those links. And I would really appreciate it if you also engage with my content in some way, shape, or form. So that just means a like, a comment in the comment section down below, or subscribe to my channel if you've seen some of my other videos and you happen to enjoy those as well. And if you guys wanna take it one step further, check out my website, embracemaking.com, where perhaps you'll find some interesting things that you might wanna purchase from me. And this is how I fund this whole channel and all the time I spend on all these projects, bringing them to you. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.